Hey, what's going on, everybody? Welcome back. Uh, thank you so much for joining me for the final review video of the Funkos. Uh, so far in video one, we took a look at the horror-themed Motu figures, which were followed by the superheroes versus villains. Today, uh, outside of the horror action figures, I think these are probably the one figures or one group of figures that I'm looking forward to looking at more in depth. So just like uh, the last video. Outside the horror figures, I don't have any of these other figures loose. They're only carded, but there's only six figures total, so it's going to be a really easy review overall. Um, so, uh, we're going to look at the Mortal Kombat Motu type figures from Funko. And uh, it's just simply Mortal Kombat X, so it doesn't really give you, you know, Savage World like you got from Horror or the Primal Age figures from DC Universe. <clears throat> we are going to look at the figures as they show up on the card. Uh, with first one, it is Raiden. Now, here's the thing. When did uh, Mortal Kombat, the, like the original Sega Genesis game, uh, I think came out in 92 or 93. Uh, this was, you know, the Mortal Kombat Sega Genesis game was one of the first video games that we got. Uh, for that system. Now I'm pretty sure Mortal Kombat was already in arcades and everything. <clears throat> Do I remember playing it in arcades? Not really. I think realistically the only video games that I can say without a shadow of doubt that I played were like if you go to like Pizza Hut and they got the Simpsons arcade game or they had the Ninja Turtles arcade game <clears throat> or they had the Russell Fest, you know, wrestling game, uh, WF wrestling game, which was awesome. So those three actually, I want the real live stand-up arcade game uh, with all the buttons and joysticks to boot. <laughs> I want those three games more than anything. Now, those systems are probably cost like $3,000 a piece or some crazy numbers. So, I mean, realistically, from affordability standpoints, no, I, I wouldn't go there for those. But And the space that they would take up and the energy and what it would do the electric bill. But still, um, if I ever had the funds available, those are like dream acquisitions. And I don't know, maybe, yeah, you know what, I take it back. I, I do remember Mortal Kombat being at the Pizza Hut as well. Yeah, in Chicago, we, I mean, we had arcades around, right? But like I, just like I didn't grow up reading comic books, as a kid, I, I didn't spend a lot of time in the arcades either, so. Uh, Raiden... Obviously, no matter what video game you're looking at, Raiden's going to be all over it. You know, Lord Raiden, you know, the, the Thunder God. A lot of these characters, when you watch the Mortal Kombat movies, when you watch all of the different Mortal Kombat TV series, there was a, a really great one in uh, the late 90s. I think Christina, uh, Christina Loken uh, was in that series as well. And it was really different because you're so used to seeing Liu Kang. You're so used to seeing Johnny Cage and Sonya Blade. And none of those characters existed, not at this time. This time, you know, Kung Lao was your ma major superhero. So, but you get, you get Shao Kahn. You get Shang Tsung, okay? Kung Lao, obviously, a uh, uh, descendant of or ascendant of Liu Kang, so... I love those shows because I love you know, seeing the back history. And if you remember getting the actual uh, video games back for Sega Genesis, they actually had a little booklet that kind of gave you a little history of the figures. I would actually love to pick up that Sega Genesis game just for nostalgia reasons. But I, I see them on eBay. They go for $30 plus, up to $50. I'm like, it's Sega Genesis. Come on. I mean, today's modern PlayStation 5 games probably don't sell for that much. <laughs> when it comes to your Masters of the Universe, you know, type of figures, I think that Mortal Kombat is absolutely perfect a resemblance uh, for these figures. So, I, I don't really think that the DC Universe meshed in too well. The horror, they really tried their best. Look great, love those figures, but you don't have to use a lot of imagination. So I think these, you know, these are Mortal Kombat characters after all, right? So their whole 
point is for fighting. Uh, next up is Katana. And guys, you know how much uh, this bothers me. I will say it every single time I look at a female wrestling action figure or a female... I mean, this ain't even wrestling. This is, you know, video game type, right? But uh, you always have the female characters. Let me use that word, characters. Always super tiny. It drives me nuts. Why can't you make Katana the same size as like every other male character, right? But the overall look is absolutely fantastic, and I love that it's got her little fan weapons, fan blades. So that's really nice. Uh, I don't think we saw Katana until uh, Mortal Kombat 2, and then later on in 1995 when the Mortal Kombat movie came out, and... Um, Introduce obviously Katana in the movie. I really like those movies. I, I know today standards they get a lot of slack, but in 1995, heck yeah, you know we were going to the theaters, we were watching that movie. That that movie was awesome. I remember uh, 1997, my younger brother and I we went to go see uh, Mortal Kombat 2, and um, yeah, we we saw Mortal Kombat 2. Uh, the movie ended. We were still upstairs. And we just walked over to the next, <laughs> the next theater or the next room and sat in and watched. Uh, I know what you did last summer. So that was uh, that was a lot of fun. Got ourselves a nice little twofer. <laughs> uh, Katana. The only thing I can remember about Katana is that she and Malina were sisters, but Malina was more deformed, whereas Katana was supposed to be like this natural beauty. So Baraka and Mylena, I, I think we're 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 a couple or or married or something. Again, uh, I haven't heard about these stories in forever. So YouTube, uh, I, I forget who the creators were, but on YouTube there actually was a Mortal Kombat series, which was incredible. I talked about the uh, I believe it was called Conquest uh, from the late nineties. Uh, for that was a Mortal Kombat TV show. So. It gives you a lot more in-depth history of the characters outside of just the video games or the movies. But even today, I mean, with your Xbox gaming systems and your PlayStation gaming systems, um, they do a lot of, uh, like, in... What do they call them? Little uh, pop-ups when... Uh, after, the, after the fighting match and they kind of do... Uh, like, they're talking, like, in a movie... Uh, I don't even know what the heck that's even called. It just goes to show you, I don't play a lot of video games. It's 2024. I'm still playing MLB 2004 from the original PlayStation. Okay, so that just goes to show how in-depth I am at playing video games. Uh, to me, I just feel like PlayStation 2 and later, anything Xbox or like that, you want to play a baseball game, yeah, the graphics are killer. You want to play the franchise mode and and just have all of this, you know, set contracts and all this fun stuff. But the, the playability is so freaking impossible, I don't know how anybody enjoys it. My wife in uh, 2005, or it may have been before that, it may have been 2004. So I was probably a high school, high school senior. And, uh, you know, she bought me MLB 2005 for PlayStation 2. Graphics were awesome. I mean, obviously superior to the original PlayStation games I've been playing forever. But you got Greg, Ma Greg Maddox on the mound going eight innings, giving up 37 runs. You know, it's just not realistic. And you have to use Greg Maddox. Why? Because you throw Kerry Wood out there, he's giving up 19 runs in the first two innings. So it was just so unnatural and impossible to play. I didn't enjoy them. Alright. So, Raiden, Katana. Next up is Scorpion. Scorpion is a... F no, it wasn't Scorpion who was the asshole. It was Sub-Zero. Uh, Scorpion... I think, I think the story with him is that Sub-Zero murdered his family. 
again, uh, they've been talking about that ever since the uh, the video games back in the early '90s. And uh, if you get a chance, I think the the I think Mortal Kombat, the last movie, was a twenty. I want to say 2019, but I don't think that sounds right. I think 2022 is more realistic, somewhere in that vicinity. And uh, the very beginning of the movie, they kind of show the sh uh, give you the showdown between Scorpion and Sub Zero, and see how uh, Scorpion dies and whatnot. <laughs> I always loved in the video games whenever he removed his mask and he's just this skull, you know, shooting fire, burning the person alive. <laughs> so, I mean, freaking Scorpion. This is, I mean, I, obviously, as as a fan, I prefer Sub Zero, but I mean, reptiles, Scorpion, Sub Zero, they're all basically, you know, the same exact look. So, Scorpion does come with. They look like swords. Yeah, they're 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 swords. You got the little handles will be here, and you can, and the blades on this end. So you can't really see it because of how they're displayed inside the package. But Raiden, you know, he obviously shoots lightning from his hands. You know, Katana, she obviously has the the fan blades, and Scorpion has the dual uh, dual sword. But the overall look is is incredible. I mean, just look at how. I think this is the stuff that you know he wraps around his body, right? Because in the movie, the um, the arrow part actually shoots right out of his hand. Where in like the TV shows or the last movie, he uses it as like a whip, right? Not, and he's got the little arrow at the end. So there are a lot of graphics about this particular figure that really make it. A very impressive piece so that is scorpion number one and I say number one because yes scorpion does get a variant and I am very pleased to be able to own both in in terms of I mean in terms of look yeah you're probably gonna covet the actual head and face and whatnot but the kind of hellish ver version of Scorpion is pretty uh, pretty awesome. Now this one is actually coming off the card. You can sit there and lift the bubble. Uh, I might glue it down. I might just leave it as is, or psh, I might just open up a package. But if I open up one package, I gotta open up them all, right? So I'm not gonna do that. Yes, the goal is to one day acquire. If I can, for a fair, for a fair price, acquire these as loose individual figures, right, as well, and have those loose displayed in front of the carded figures. Yeah, see, limited chase edition. I like that. You know, there's not too many times I've looked. I mean, I've gotten a lot of variants. I don't think I've ever seen the word chase on any on any package. Now, you know that it's a chase or a variation to an original, either through review videos like these, you learn about them, or you might be familiar with, like, uh, Zombie Sailor Cebu. You know that the green pants was the original figure, so when you start seeing this pink pants out, you know that there's a, a variant to it. So, overall, look, appears relatively identical. Uh, to the original figure again. Um, I just really love that Ghost Rider type head look to it. And I could be wrong, but I think this might actually glow in the dark. Because anytime I kind of see like those, these type of figures, I always feel like they have some kind of glow in the uh, glow in the dark attribute to them. So, all right, next one up, probably the most popular and probably most well-known character of the Mortal Kombat universe. Uh, nope, not Raiden. I think Liu Kang is probably the number one most coveted character. And uh, I don't know if I like this look. I guess because I'm, I'm kind of used to seeing him like uh, LJ and Ricky Steamboat with the black pants and, you know, no shirt whatnot. Or uh, he'll have like a little red headband or whatnot. So seeing him clothed like this, it's obviously not what I grew up, 
you know, playing the Sega Genesis or, uh, yeah, I think Sega Genesis really was the last of it. I know we had the first and second game. I don't know how many more they came out with I mean, over the years and Xbox and, and PlayStation, but those were all the, the same game, right? They just put different, different systems for that respective game. Cutscenes. <laughs> I couldn't remember what the stupid thing was called earlier. I just out of nowhere, cutscenes. That's what I was talking about went with the movie clips inside the video game. I'm an idiot. <laughs> Sorry, I don't. I didn't mean to yell at you guys. <laughs> I was just really excited. <laughs> uh, Liu Kang. He does not appear to have any weapon. I mean, I get it that he shoots fire from his hands, but come on, you you would think you'd give Luke Hang something. <laughs> uh, that's kind of disappointing that no accessories for this figure. You know, they could have done something like they did with Raiden. You know, with the uh, with the lightning being shot out of his hand, they could do the exact same thing with uh, Luke Kang. You know, make like little blue, uh, little red stuff come out of his hands, make it look like fire. All right. Last figure is the legendary Sub Zero. Sub Zero might actually be my all-time favorite character. I mean, I, over the years, I would probably always say Liu Kang, followed by Johnny Cage. But I think that Sub Zero is just simply the most enjoyable character as a bad guy because of his superpowers. I think he easily one of the most powerful characters. Um, he never seems to disappoint in video games, movies, or TV shows. He always seems like a very dominant force. And like like Scorpion and Reptile, he's just another ninja type, right? The clothing, as far as looking at all these figures, I mean, Scorpion and Sub-Zero, they're probably the most closely resembling their video game play. Sub-Zero, even more so. And, you know, he's got this little ice sword and... Uh, I don't know, a sledgehammer or something, but a little ice hammer over here. And that's what he looks like when he's loose. Uh, this is a fantastic figure. I mean, even the face mask, very Bane-ish. <laughs> the overall look uh, with, like I said, with the, with the Bane face mask, with the Shogun armor and everything... I don't know if those are, yeah, those got to be like little knives right there on his forearm into his wrist. This figure is just stacked with so many darn positives. Yeah, Funko, when when they came out with this uh, combat, uh, Mortal Kombat release, I think they really did a fantastic job. Very pleased with those figures. In fact, uh... With Funko, all three that we've looked at, all three sets, uh, I haven't seen a bad figure. I mean, obviously, there's those I prefer more than others. Uh, some of the female uh, characters, obviously, with smaller bodies. But overall, not not one bad figure. Not any bad figures. Definitely not any bad horror figures. You know, DC versus... Uh, the DC Universe characters were all spectacular. I, I freaking love these Mortal Kombat figures, so... Super glad to get those. Oh, um, there is one additional thing Ugh, stuck in this chair. Uh, so, I kind of showed this off during my last, uh, during my room tour video. And, you know, we got the Hulk Hogan that looks like this. We got the two Ultimate Warriors that are roughly this size, right? I talked about having like an Ivan Drago type character that was upstairs. I never brought him down. At least I think that's who this is. I don't know. Uh, this is just, I think, some kind of Mexican knockoff figure. But this is one of those knockoffs we didn't see before. So I'm not going to do any full review on this or anything. I just wanted to kind of bring them up. You know, just to compare and whatnot. Yeah. There is... Uh, one Ultimate Warrior that's selling for like $500. Uh, I think it comes from the same guy that I bought a lot of these other figures from. And uh, Alessandro, I think, is the one that's selling it, if I'm not mistaken. And uh, $500. I, I just can't do 500 
I think eventually, if it really is as super tall as it may, as it looks in the pictures, even bigger than these guys, I might go up to 100, 150, possibly, but five hundred dollars, I'm I'm good with where I'm at right now. All right, guys, that is it for now. Uh, the next video, I'm gonna start working on the NECA Toonie Terror figures. I'll start with series one. Uh, I do believe I got all of the loose figures in, so Bell will be able to, to go side to side with the carded figures. And uh, obviously, once I get down to series two onward, I have the cards. I don't have the loose figures, so. But uh, there might be a few figures here and there that I don't have in a particular series. That's fine. If we're just missing like one or two figures from a series or something, we'll we'll make do one way or another. So. Guys, as always, uh, thank you so much for watching, and until next time, goodbye, everybody.